Bowers Pony. Flight 14. This is our big conclusion to Flight 13's emergency landing. With a good running engine, we were able to get our first air-to-air -air of the program. But despite all that good luck, we still had a bit of a mess when we landed. Stay tuned, it's going to be awesome. Flight 14 was basically a reshot of Flight 13. We made some changes to how we did chase. We made some changes uh, from a briefing standpoint to how we prepared the ground crew for an emergency like the one we had experienced on Flight 13. But other than that, the biggest difference was it was successful. We were able to take off, climb to altitude, do our cruise portion, and then we were even able to get some air-to-air -air footage. Getting air-to-air -air footage is something that Rod had always wanted, something that Bo had pushed for, but unfortunately we'd never been able to get to it to this point. So it was nice to be able to finally get to at least that milestone. Despite all the good news, uh, when we finally got to the chocks we ended up uh, with a leak uh, not too different from the previous flight but for now here's the engine start there. check check lay this out We removed the cowls when we were here last. Yes. And then you topped off the fluids. Yep. You went through and torque sealed all the connections, double checked everything, everything again. From oiling system, coolant system, hydraulic system, PSRU system, fuel system, everything. And then hose the engine down. Yeah, we've had several. We had to wash the airplane engine down. We used a, a Dawn dish soap degreaser. We used a crud cutter. <laughs> We had a real mess on our hands, not just externally on the airplane, but in an engine bay big time. Glitter one's taking runway three zero will be uh, directly overhead. Power's good. Okay, here comes 
Clear traffic, Little One is above a left downwind, so 2,500, continue to climb. There was some discussion from Zach about how much oil went overboard. Did it dump the whole PSRU or is it just what was in the prop? Pretty much. So we ended up, to get to our level, we put two and a half quarts back in. Okay. So it was a return line for the, uh, from the prop governor the to the PSRU? Governor back into the uh, recovery tank for the PSRU. Right. The PSRU uh, has its own oil supply. We separate that from the engine oil because the original prototypes flew with uh, you know, their, their prop uh, shared the same engine oil as the engine did. Right. We designed it specifically to, so that, let's say, if we lost oil pressure in the engine, we'd still have oil pressure in the prop. Uh, also, uh, the PSRU cases will, uh, if they're using the hotter engine oil, uh, would expand about 20 thousandths, and it would be a, a pretty noisy gearbox. I'm running 90 weight gear lube in there. When it shuts down now, it doesn't sit there and rattle and roll and clank and clunk. You know. <laughs> Coming up on downwind to be. That was good. Pumps are good. So one four three and that's probably my VH here. There's a lot of talk online, and I know we covered it last time, about uh, procedures for the airplane. You want to go through again the, you know, why there aren't procedures or how you're developing procedures as you go and, and the struggles that go with that. Well, that's pretty complicated on procedures. There's no book that says, okay, take this off and this off and remove this hose and do this. Um, we do have our own set of procedures that we go through on removing things. So, I mean, you come from a real formal mechanic yeah, background, yeah, right? And yeah. working for a big corporations that can't put up with errors, right? So you're used right. to the procedures. Yeah, right. And this is unusual for you. Yeah, no, it is. And it's a, it's a very hard pill to swallow, to tell you the truth, uh, because people's lives are at risk. And that is like, I've always told you, that's my first and foremost worry and my thing that I go through and do. So when we remove stuff, you know, we drain in the containers, seal containers, we put caps and fittings back on hoses that are exposed. We try not to let things get in, uh, which we've experienced as well. It's just, you know, if stuff can go wrong, it's gone wrong, unfortunately for us. So, you know, we go through labeling procedures and stuff, um, torque stuff. Um, painting and marking after things are done, you know, should have been done. But as many times as we had this PSRU off, it would be every color of the darn rainbow right now. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, um, it's just one of those things that we got to learn. And as far as I'm concerned, take even more seriously. Add a little sugar. Okay, there's 10,000 feet power coming back and uh, time 1127, looking at 20 minutes. Roger, 95. And switching the fuel valve. Okay. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Coming back in. Okay. Five minutes for twenty minutes. Okay. Power's coming back. These are the makings of you. I'm showing the one to fifty statue. Yeah, I think that'll work. If you're aboard, let me know we'll roll wings level so we can get some shots for run. I'm on raise on board. Wings coming level. Uh, it looks like we got a little bit of a weep out of the oil cooler probably. And there's uh, maybe a normal weep that comes out of that uh, drain where the gear in front of the gear door. Eric's comfortable with it? Yeah, it's, it looks good. Alright, I'm moving off to your left. All right, so for wrap up then, the plan here is we're gonna do the same card that we did last time. Yep. So big power takeoff, just so we get to the edge of the airport, back to climb power, climb up. Justin's gonna meet me up high, so he'll meet me at 7,000. Then we'll continue uh, climb power up to 10, level at 10, spend 15 or 20 minutes up there at uh, 10,000 feet back at cruise power. Let this, the rings get good and happy, and then bring back the power for a normal landing with an overhead approach. So this uh, being our first air-to-air, -air, it was the first time that I had flown formation off another airplane with the Bowers Pony. Uh, and with that first high-gain task uh, came my first indication that the airplane is actually pretty light in pitch. 
This was uh, made worse by the uh, stick in the airplane being a little bit loose. Okay, and then you want to do a lead change. I didn't realize how light this thing is in pitch. I think, uh, I think I was experiencing that when I was underneath you. Let's do a break, and then you go to full power, and I'll get back in position. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll get a nod from Eric that he's ready. Ready. Beautiful. Okay, I see your wings leveling. 30 seconds. Okay, get close. Did that look good for him? Yeah, that was awesome. Wish Bo could have been here to see it. We didn't talk much about emergencies last time. Uh, you have my wife's phone number. I'm yes. Okay. You're going to be in the chase plane. I'd Where rather you have you. Guys, need me. I'm, I'm good. We'd rather have you in there. So the concern is that, uh, like last time, right, where we're coming down to land with a, potentially an emergency, giving you guys a heads up so that you know what's coming, and then sort of having thought through that stuff. That's all, in the past has been Eric's concern, and with Eric Airborne, just want to make sure we went through it. So, so one step back from what the the, the call on the fire trucks is, you know, Elliot's coming down, and you can make the runway, but you're not going to be able to taxi off the runway. So, yeah. or you've got. You, something happens when you're stuck on the runway. So having a way to tell you guys that, hey, like you need to go out there and get him off the runway. Gotcha. Uh, or like, you know, he doesn't quite make the runway, uh, but we don't need to call fire trucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's kind of every between, everything between a perfect landing and, you know, end of the world yeah. kind of thing. So. In the past, we've used presence of fire as a, an automatic. Yeah, if it's call. burning, call the fire truck, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is awkward because we've sort of started the actual brief, so maybe we just do the actual brief. Okay, thank you. Power settings, I'm gonna use uh, 42 inches and 4200 RPM for takeoff. Uh, climb, 30 inches and 35 turns for climb. Uh, and then cruise was uh, 25 inches and 3000 RPM. That sounds about right. Flap speed, 150. 130 for gear, and then 100 for the approach. CTAP, 123.05. Yep. Button one, 12345. Okay. And then uh, button two, yeah, right. jumbo, yeah, two. one, two, seven, four, seven. Oh. Gas is full, looks full to me, or at least really close to it. We don't have a fuel flow in indicator still. That's uh, in, in the works. So I'm going to use um, one tank until I'm at altitude, and then I'll use the other tank for the way home. Okay. I guess I should have said it already. The plan for the last flight was that if everything went well, we try to get a second flight off. And so we're very quickly trying to move to longer flights because we're trying to get that 40 hours done. Yeah, we'll we'll have that, 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 that the next time you fly, we'll have that. Okay. I'll go put on my PJs and we'll get this done. All righty. Thanks, guys. Okay, time's up. I'm going to start pulling it off. That'll be it. Come on, doors opening. Looks good. Give me like a hard uh, turn to the left. I'll jump aboard. You run the rest of these. Copy. And I'm blind. Two has lead. And let's push uh, tower. Copy. One. Two. Right there, we got a clear fire two overhead. 5,500 inbound for uh, landing at the right there. That works. Yep. All right, the other traffic. Clear fire two. Clear final two zero. Low pressure. Right there. up here too. If I saw you traffic glitter one flight of two down one to beam runway three zero.
other than the obvious, how, how to, how how to, to go. Off the fuel flow still an out. And then having a, a high gain task, uh, that's the, the stick is loose and you know, the stick wiggles in the socket. It's a real issue trying to flush formation. Okay, what is this now? The, the infinity stick is loose on no, the No, it's mouth. the whole, I think it's the whole shaft. You think it's the whole shaft? So finally what You're was working was I loaded it way up nose down and then held against it and then I could release it without oh, trim it the dead band. Okay. And then that, my hands were getting wore out, my wrist is all lit up right now, so I went nose up and then I could lock my arm <laughs> and hold Christ. it nose down. That was for the whole flight or just the formation just flight? Just the yeah. last, last five minutes. It's just, cool. you can hear all right? Yeah, I mean, you're kind of staticky, and you guys are both kind of staticky, but I can hear Elliot a little more clear. <laughs> yeah. As the guys uh, tear into the airplane and try to figure out what that leak was, uh, we're going to continue to set up for the next flight. Uh, obviously, uh, the goals right now are a lot about breaking in uh, the new rings and the new pistons. Uh, but once, uh, assuming we can get this uh, leak thing sorted out, we're going to move back into the FCG testing, which was our uh, remaining goal, so that we can work on uh, getting some more utility out of the airplane. Yeah, well, he's, he's, you know, the ring. That sounded really good. I don't know. I'll just, I guess I just want, I want to be able to have you fly that thing for two hours and come back in and not a drip you. <laughs> Flight 14 is dedicated to Bo Lichty and Abby Ritter.